common modalités de gouvernance. Hello Charles. Hello. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. Uh, welcome in Montreal and welcome in the World Social Forum. Um, does the comments sound something for you? Well, I remember uh, being introduced to that concept after the World Trade Organization protests in Seattle in 1999. So I'm, I come with just a little bit of familiarity with the concept and seeing people talk about it over the years. Um, and it, it often comes attached to things like the solidarity economy um, and uh, figuring out how to make more, uh, how to prefigure what we want in the future by getting people used to, used to what the future might be, but starting today. So, I told you, we assist at the emergence of these different initiatives that could be under this meme of the commons. Mm -hmm. uh, do you personally uh, know such initi initiatives where you live? Well, I don't know how many use that language, but I give as an example one of the most important movements in New York City uh, was turning a lot of abandoned lots into community gardens. And it had some celebrity support, like from uh, Bette Midler. Um, and as a result, you now have these properties you know, all over the city, uh, but especially in places that were the subject of a lot of inattention followed by gentrification. And then communities came together to protect these empty spaces because they uh, engaged in, in a lot of free labor to, to make them nice places. Um, and you can see evidence of that all over the city. It's a kind of visual reminder. Another more recent example is the growth of the participatory budgeting uh, movement. Now in New York City, I don't know what the number is exactly, but it could be a majority of the city council districts in the city all have participatory uh, budgeting. Um, and it reminds me that I first learned about that concept attending the first World Social Forum in Porto Alegre, where I think that, you know, it spread, it spread from there. Um, and I also know that the city is now, and this is interesting to talk about our government doing this, the city is now investing in co-ops, uh, trying to encourage people to um, run their own businesses cooperatively as worker co-ops, um, in part to raise the incomes of people who, who otherwise might be stuck in, uh, in service jobs that have, have no capacity for growth. I understand that you've been very active in the Bernie Sanders campaign. Everybody over the world <laughs> were, were very, very, very uh, attentive to what was happening there. How do you relate this campaign with this new emergence of another way to do politics. Well, one, I'd love to mention uh, my friend uh, Rappi Castillo, who was a volunteer for the campaign. And he's behind Coders for Progress, which emerged of, as a group of volunteers who actually built many of the tools that helped the campaign do as well as it did. In particular, something at maps.berniesanders.com, where you can see you know, hundreds or thousands of events taking place in real time. Um, and he's now taking that energy, trying to make political tools that would not just be um, uh, open software in the sense that anyone could replicate it, but to actually run services that are accessible to political campaigns um, at no cost, just be, you know, because it would be good for democracy for these things to exist. Um, so that would be one, one point of connection. But on an even broader level, the way the campaign was organized, it was mostly volunteers doing what they thought was right at the local level without as much direction uh, from paid staffers. So you could argue that the campaign was largely crowdsourced uh, and that that's, that was one of the keys to its success. Two little questions. You, your background as an activist, you talked about Seattle, 99, you talked about Porto Alegre, 2001, etc. Where the members of the campaign, the uh, Sanders campaign, were the same with the same background or that? No, no. I, I, I would actually say that the one misconception is that Bernie Sanders is a very progressive political figure, 
But as a politician running a campaign, he used very traditional methodologies. His initial staff to decide his strategy and the way, the way he engaged in it, you know, media heavy, television, uh, top down, uh, focusing only on one state at a time. The, the, this is the normal way of doing things. I would say that the innovation to a large extent was coming from outside the campaign. And in their wisdom, they often found a way to relate to it and, and, and form that relationship. But this is not, uh, he is not of and with the social movements. He is a politician from Vermont, uh, which is a different thing. Mm -hmm. And do you think that if you, if you ask uh, Bernie uh, what he thinks about commons, he will know what, what you're talking about? He's, he's very smart, and he probably does. Um, but I, if I had to give you advice, I would say talk to his policy staff in his Senate office and there you will find people who are experts in everything from new monetary theory to whatever and they will probably you know be able to you know package that in the right way so that Bernie can say yes that's what I meant <laughs> and you personally do you think that the comments could be could be a meme that could serve the the objectives uh, that were were spread out by Bernie Sanders' campaign? I think what I like about the, the, the commenting idea is that um, politics in the United States, even more so I think than other countries, is a very specialized uh, technical profession. And it makes a huge difference what access a person has to resources, not just money, but expertise and relationships. So I think about how do you democratize politics? What kinds of uh, tools are at our disposal to make achieving political change more accessible to more people and less conditional on what a more sophisticated operation is able to provide? And I think that the, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of super volunteers would love to find out more about that, love to hear about tools, resources, trainings that could be made available to anyone so that they can move up the ladder of being experts in their own right. Have you heard about, uh, about the Chicago Commons Assembly? I haven't, but um, I'm, I'm friendly with some activists there, so I'm wondering, you know, what, tell me more. You know, there, there, is, a, um, there is a route for a strategy uh, for the, what they call the post-capitalist transition by the peer-to-peer -peer foundations and uh, one, of, one of the steps would, would be to create at the reg local regional chambers of commons and uh, assemblies of commons and it seems that in Chicago there are already an assembly of commons. Nice, I think that dovetails well with the folks thinking about um, climate change transition and there are so many systems that are at risk that we believe can't possibly continue as they are, ranging from our food, our water, our housing systems, uh, transportation, they just can't continue as they are. And, and there's an urgent need to get more people involved in figuring that out. Um, what I would say is in New York it might be much more difficult because of the scarcity of housing. Real estate is such a dominant concern, being able to pay one's rent I think that in some ways that, that drives out so much potential energy that might otherwise exist. And finally, what, what do you think the World Social Forum, how do you think the World Social Forum could help in promoting this kind of new meme of the commons? The world, I mean, I love the World Social Forum, it's great, but I think about the entire process of me traveling here and finding housing and feeding myself and deciding what to do or uh, um, I don't know that the World Social Forum has figured out mechanisms to integrate my consumption of those things with a collective process for providing them. Um, I, don't even, I don't even have solid advice for how that might happen but that might be an avenue. Um, 50,000 people descending on Montreal if each person spends a certain amount per day you have a vast amount of, of resources. If there was a way to make it a teaching moment for people to experience the commons because of how we're going about it, shared ride services, uh, different ways of uh, bypassing Airbnb for housing, 
um, that might be a very concrete way of advancing those ideas. Mm, good. Uh, well, why do you think if Bernie Sanders couldn't make it to come to come at the, the forum? I mean, I'm sure it was a scheduling conflict to some extent, but I would also I would also uh, pose just a, a troubling question for anyone wondering about the United States, which is. Um, Sadly, uh, people in other countries have no votes in our system. And at the end of the day, whether or not you can get some support from the people you're spending time with is a, is a determining factor in what politicians decide to do. So, you know, I feel like it is, a, it is a, a better strategy to find the people in the United States who are not politicians necessarily, but movement activists and to use them as the intermediary to the, to the Bernie Sanders phenomenon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.